Can you please speak about blood types? Why do we have them? How did they evolve? Why would O be more resistant to COVID-19? Love the podcast. Thanks for all you do from South Carolina. You want to do two minutes on blood types? Are you prepared to? I mean, we can talk a little bit about how they work. Yeah, um, that's that's about all. Yeah. I'm struggling with my chair today. All right. So your red blood cells have... So an antigen is a molecular signature, and your cells have antigens sticking off of them. Uh, that is to say, a distribution of positive and negative charges in space that is unique. There are two, no, three that uh, are found on the surface of human red blood cells. One of them is called A, one of them is called B, and the other one is called the RH factor or rhesus factor. Um, a and B exist at the same place in the genome so that you can, because you have two chromosomes, you can have an A and the absence of a code. You can have a B in the absence of a code. You can have an A and a B, or you can have both absences, um, which will give you an O blood type. But basically, the blood types are described based on the presence of an antigen. So if you have an A, a B, or an RH factor, that's a presence, and you get O when you have a total absence of all of those, well, no, you, an absence of the A and B factor, and RH is categorized separately. And so... These things create... And where where is RH? Like, where, where does it... It's not... It's somehow in a different part of the genome. Is that all? Yeah. Or does it, is it affixed to a different part of the cell as well? No, nope. I think they're all over the surface, and it's just a different uh, locus. Okay. So you, um, can, you can be... You can have the A antigen or the B antigen or both of them or neither, and you can have the RH antigen or neither. Yeah. And if you have, for instance, the B antigen and not the RH, you're B negative. Right. That would be your blood type. P positive and negative are about the RH factor, right. Mm -hmm. And so there's a rule. The presence of an antigen triggers the immune system. The immune system is designed to recognize that which is not self. So that is to say your immune system will react to something as foreign if you yourself don't make the antigen in question. So if you have A, B positive blood, you carry every antigen. What that means is you can take blood from anybody because no matter what antigens they have, you will regard it as self since you produce all of those things. If you have O negative blood, then you're a universal donor, but you can only take blood from another O negative person because any antigen will trigger your immune system to reject the blood. If you, if you get A negative blood, which has only one antigen that you don't have, A, um, your, your body will say, that's not self, respond, create antibodies to, uh, to reject it. To, it will, to it will fi literally fight the tissue and kill it, yeah. um, which is very dangerous to have happening in your bloodstream. Um, the rejection of transplanted tissues that are not blood is much more complex. So in some sense, this entire ABO rejection donor uh, complex is about um, the simplicity of the antigens found on uh, red blood cells. In the case of something like liver, um, you're talking about a much more complex set of antigens so you, that you need a very good match at something called the major histocompatibility complex which is why you need to go through lots of donors rather than there just being a liver bank where you can go get one that's a match for you. So um, now I know that there are very different distributions of probabilities for antigens for purebred human populations. Yeah. What I don't know is what the ancestral state was. In other words, are some of these blood types limited to some populations and only in recent times with human mixing have these things spread between them or were they always somewhat mixed but the prevalences are different between populations that yeah, I don't know. I suspect a good analysis has been done but I also don't know and the only one the only sort of map that I can pull up in my head right now is that uh, Native American populations meaning you know the, the the descendants of the original Beringians in both North America and South America are more likely to be O Maybe, and I don't know that there's actually a, an RH factor specificity there, but I know it's O, that um, Native Americans are much less likely to be A, B, or AB. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I would love to know what the ancestral state was. Yep. It was purely yep. O at the point of the Beringians having descended into the Americas or not. Yeah, so, but then the final part of this question, and then we'll, we'll end for today, uh, is why would O be more resistant to COVID-19? Um, and, and especially, let me just like, 
add something to the question um, for me. Like, we don't know the answer, especially in light of it's not that A, B, and A, B are more susceptible to COVID, but if I remember correctly, it's A that is specifically more susceptible, and then um, B and A, B blood types are kind of neutral, kind of in the middle. So it's not that, like, not having antigens on your blood versus having antigens makes you susceptible or not. It's it's a very specific one that makes you uh, more susceptible versus having none that makes you more resistant or less susceptible. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think the thing, yeah. the first thing I would like to know in order to answer the question, there is reason to think that red blood cells probably do not get infected. That is to say, even if virus gets into red blood cells, that it cannot reproduce itself, but that is not dead certain. So right. Is that because they're anucleate? Yeah. So red blood cells in mammals have no nucleus. But the coronaviruses do not integrate into the nuclear genome. And so it yeah. is possible that they have yeah. ribosomal components that would allow a virus to replicate itself even though it has no nucleus. And I would like to know whether that happens or doesn't. It's something we should, we should be able to look that up. Um, in which case, it would almost certainly have to do with the difference in ability to enter a red blood cell based on the antigens on its surface um, uh, but anyway, I guess we'll have to return to it after we know. Yeah. Interesting question. Yep. Yep.